and well-wishers who are here with us today uh, to be immediately and quickly affected uh, by the effects of climate change. Um, I now invite uh, Dr. G. H. Harin to start of annual report. Have one of we both look at both man here. We managed uh, restored mangrove areas in 215 hectares both, and uh, we have an app application, mobile-based application, which gave uh, inputs to the farmers of the weather and log for effective management. This is one of your, uh, we, uh, we initiate participate research trials for each yield enhancement in traditional paddy land races under our climate change. Earlier we came and met, met you and uh, one of our staff participate in the IPCC reports and so on. And yes, I will check in. In the outcome of this conference, thanks for your question. This will be uh, online. Uh, this is by Dr. Yasin Mohammed. Of talking about the doing blue. Therefore, today I have reworked on the title of systems under change challenge dispersed from the developing countries, uh, also including India. So disaster preparedness and relief strategies seem to be coping well compared to others who do not in the advent of climate change. I think we equally need to be you know, the solutions that we need to look at as well as we move forward. Therefore, my message is I find food systems offer us a sea of opportunities to turn the tide on climate change and realize a shared prosperity for all. However, for this to happen, we need to recognize that I find food systems are non-linear systems which involve multiple actors and varying networks and interactions, right? So when we talk about the impacts of climate change on fisheries or aquatic food systems, and when we talk about solutions, we cannot just isolate fisheries by itself. We need to look at the interconnected systems, right? So be it uh, the fisheries resource themselves, the market, access to market, um, social equity, um, financing, governance, etc. So all the elements they need to be looked at as one unit, not in isolation. Then as we do so, I think our solutions that we propose, that we put forward, can bring about a desirable and lasting change. Therefore, the message is response of the impacts of climate change on our food systems and its implications for ecological, economic and social systems can only be understood with an integrated systems approach not in silos, not in isolation. Therefore, that's why we all need, need to come together. And these kind of platforms that the MSSRF has organized today brings us all together to collectively look for solutions. And to conclude, perhaps, you know, I have a call for action, a few bullet points. One is we need to make sustainable, nature-positive aquatic foods a key part of our nationally determined contributions. As we tally our plans or our plans to reduce our carbon footprints from our economies, we need to include nature positive aquatic foods as key part of the national determined contributions. Let me give an example about this. How many of us know the more fish we leave in the water, the more carbon dioxide we sink? fish play exactly the same role as forests do. If you have more forests, you're able to sequester more CO2 from the atmosphere. And fish play a key role in carbon cycling. So therefore, if we are sustainably managing our fish resources in coastal areas, that means we are sinking more CO2. And we need to include aquatic food systems and aquatic food ecosystems, infrastructure, workers, assets in national adaptation plans and disaster preparedness and relief strategies of our states or our countries or regions. Uh, as I said earlier, the transition to a low carbon aquatic food based diets must ensure those who are furthest behind benefit most. In line with the principles of the sustainable development goals, that means ensuring no one is left behind. And finally, 
adaptation and mitigation efforts in and through operating systems must be underpinned by effective governance, predictable finance, social and economic inclusion, eliminating systemic barriers such as access to market and non-market services, and respecting ecological boundaries as well. So this is the summary of my talk for today, and I really hope that resonates with your thinking as well. Thank you, Dr. Mohammed, for the very enlightening uh, keynote address. We'll now have the felicitation addresses. Uh, some of them are online. Uh, first, we'll have uh, Dr. Kundavi Kadresan. Uh, she's a leader of the, uh, in international development and works with World Bank, FAO, and CGIAI. Dr. Kundavi. Thank you very much, um, Honorable Minister. Uh, it is Dr. Madhura Swaminathan. Uh, Dr. Hariharan and other speakers and guests who are joined for this important event. Uh, first, it's an honor and pleasure uh, to be joining you all today for this important uh, event organized by the Swaminathan uh, Foundation. Uh, first, I wanted to convey my deep appreciation uh, to Dr. Swaminathan and the Foundation for the impressive work that they do uh, including for bringing us to, uh, together today uh, for this important dialogue. I have very fond memories of having visited um, Chennai, uh, a similar event in 2019, where it was a very uh, enriching uh, discussion uh, with Dr. Swaminathan leading. Uh, he is so much respected and admired all over the world for his impressive work over many, many years. So very glad that this event uh, this year, focusing on mountain and coastal ecosystems, uh, shines light on some important issues uh, faced by the mountain and coastal ecosystems. It uh, allows us to look at some of the work that's ongoing, uh, work that has been done, and work that needs to be done, and use this opportunity uh, to share knowledge and experiences among policymakers and practitioners. So such uh, platforms are so very critical uh, in terms of looking at some specific development challenges. In the spirit of sharing uh, some perspectives, uh, I wanted to uh, speak to you all about three main points. As an ag economist uh, and having worked at the World Bank, FAO and CGIAR, there are some common themes that I see are very important in ensuring that we have sustainable development. That applies also to uh, mountain and, and uh, coastal ecosystems. The first, context matters. And I think it was uh, brought out by the speakers already. Uh, there has been no shortage of work on uh, development issues. SDG issues have been analyzed a lot. But we need to go beyond general and uh, work on issues unique to mountain and coastal ecosystems. The opening remarks that Dr. Swaminathan made that we haven't fully addressed or understood the issues uh, that are becoming much more a priority in light of uh, climate change for the mountain and coastal population. So one of the first steps for making good decisions about any problem starts with data and analysis. And this helps us to have a much more refined understanding of the issues so that solutions can be more tailored. Dr. Madhura Swaminathan talked about the science and, and I'm really glad that we are more and more start focus on the science and techno technology and innovation all based on some evidence that we can actually put those interventions that are, uh, that are relevant for what is on the ground, not just on agroclimatic condition alone, but also looking at the socioeconomic uh, situation and even historical and cultural perspective, the gender dimensions and all that. Then the interventions become meaningful. Uh, we have seen in a more recent uh, report by FAO in its mountain partnership, they've done some excellent case studies at country level looking at a number of uh, mountain farming systems and sustainable agriculture pra practices at on the ground situation. We also heard from Dr. Sam Mohammed about the work that is ongoing in aquaculture, in fisheries, in the coastal issues, 
But all of this is to say, how can we do more work that is more relevant on the ground because issues are so very complex. And to be able to do that, uh, that is becoming more relevant for the farming and coastal communities. So I hope that the conference actually digs deeper into the kind of work that can be done and that is already being done that can be put out there to be our understanding of the mountain and coastal systems, these ecosystem issues are also much more uh, nuanced and more richer for interventions to work. My second point I want to make Dr. is uh, uh, the same thing that Esther was talking me? about. Dr. Kundavi, this can we, yes. um, we, are, we are a little bit uh, behind schedule, so um, could we um, have a, a shortened uh, speech? Can you wrap yes. up in a minute or so? I will, yeah, I will. So my, my second point was on the systems approach. Since um, uh, as some already talked about it, I, I did not go into more in depth on that, but we really need to look at this in a much more holistic fashion to have a more sustainable way of addressing the issue. My last point would be on partnerships. We talk about partnership all the time, but uh, viable partnerships are never easy. So how do you bring the private sector, government, civil societies together. Uh, I know the southern states in India are taking a lead role in some of the development issues, including the new government in Tamil Nadu is looking at very innovative, creative ways of bringing partnerships together. And this is an area where when we pool technology, understanding, resources, that there is uh, more scope for uh, lasting impact. On that note, I would like to close by thanking you all uh, for having given me an opportunity to... ...source of Basmati rice annually, which is five billion US dollar. If India is able to offset the import uh, uh, substitutions and the ex expenditure that we are making of Forex on import, uh, a lot of credit goes to Basmati rice and the leadership of Professor Swaminathan, pages of each one of them. I convey our greetings to Professor on his birthday. Also equally important is the fact that in 67, India was importing, uh, was producing 12 million tons of wheat total. And with Professor Sinta, uh, I will have some opportunity to discuss about it. Thank you very much for giving this opportunity. Thank you, Dr. Singh. We'll now move to invite uh, the minister uh, Honorable Minister Shri Shiva Mayapan, Mayanathan, um, to give us the inaugural address. We'll continue the solicitation addresses after his uh, speech, please. Swarming coastal agri agricultural lands and allied activities, mangroves could help avert such a calamity because of their soil piling, carrot strategies, and soil tolerance. Today, climate change is a major development change challenge that Tamil Nadu will have the, to face. The, the significance of climate change and what it means to ag agriculture and livelihoods of hundreds of farmers, people living in hilly and mountain regions have been emphasized for many years of, by Professor Swaminathan, which we have happily acknowledge. We have all benefited to form his analysis as well as the directions for action that he has introduced. We now do need act on them, especially on those aspects that particularly affect our state. The UN has proclaimed 2022 as the international year of Artisanal research Month. Technologies for climate change, information, education, and communication for empowering youth. In the hilly regions of eastern and, and the western cuts and coastal regions of India, Yama Swaminathan Research Foundation is implementing various projects in only 80 villages in the Pudukote district, a series of training and awareness programs are conducted in these villages periodically to cope with the challenges posed by climate change in the agricultural sector. 
animal husbandry and nutrition, other important activities of the M. S. Swaminathan Research Foundation include creating awareness about the common welfare schemes and es establishing links between the development departments and the farming com community. With this words, I am extremely happy to inaugurate the International Conference on the Sustainable Development in Hill and Coastal Ecosystems. My heartly congratulations to the organizers and the participants. விவசாயத்திற்கு அருகிலே இருக்கின்ற கேரளா மாநிலத்தில் இருக்கின்ற ஆலப்புழா என்கின்ற அந்த மாவட்ட பகுதிகளுக்கு கடற்கரையில் கடுமையான வெள்ளம் பாதிக்கப்பட்டிருந்தது எல்லோரும் இல்லத்திற்கும் அவர்கள் போட்டில் தான் போய் உணவெல்லாம் கொடுத்தாங்க அப்போது அந்த கடல்லேருந்து கடல் தண்ணியும் அந்த மக்களையும் பாதுகாப்பதற்காக தடுப்பு சுவர் எழுப்பியிருந்தாங்க இந்த அதற்கான வடிவமைப்பு கொடுத்தவர் யார் என்று கேட்டப்போ அந்த மக்கள் சொன்னியது நமது பேராசிரியர் எம் எஸ் சுவாமிநாதன் அவர்கள் வடிவமைத்து கொடுத்த திட்டம் என்று சொன்னார் ஒரு தமிழனாக இருந்து நான் அங்கே மிகவும் பெருமையோடு அதை நான் பார்த்தேன் இப்படி உலகெங்கும் இந்த ஒரு மிகப்பெரிய ஒரு தனி மனிதனாக தோன்றி இன்றைக்கு இந்த நவீன உலகத்தில் இயற்கையோடு சார்ந்து அந்த கட்டமைப்பை விவசாயிகளுக்காக உருவாக்கி தந்தவர் எங்கெல்லாம் பாதிப்பு ஏற்படுகிறதோ அது பாதிப்புகளை தடுக்கக்கூடிய அந்த நுட்பங்களை கற்றுத்தந்தவர் ஐயா பேராசிரியர் எம் எஸ் சுவாமிநாதன் அவர்கள் என்பதை நான் பெருமையோடு தெரிவித்துக் கொள்கிறேன் அந்த அடிப்படையில் அவர் இது அந்த தலைமை தாங்குகின்ற விழாவில் மாண்புமிகு தமிழக முதலமைச்சர் சார்பாக நானும் இந்த விழாவில் பங்கேற்பதில் மிகுந்த மகிழ்ச்சியும் பெருமையும் அடைகிறேன் மாண்புமிகு தமிழக முதலமைச்சர் அவர்கள் கடந்த ஆண்டு இந்த விழாவில் கலந்து கொண்டு ஐயா அவர்கள் நூறாண்டு காலம் வாழ வேண்டும் நூற்றாண்டு கலந்து வாழ வேண்டும் என்று வாழ்த்தியிருக்கின்றார்கள் கண்டிப்பாக அவருடைய மாணவர்கள் இங்கே நமது சார் சொன்னது மாதிரி பாசுமதி ரைஸ் பற்றி சொன்னாங்க அவர் தான் அதனுடைய டைரக்டர் கண்டுபிடித்து உருவாக்கி இன்றைக்கு எவ்வளோ பெரிய முப்பதனாயிரம் கோடிக்கு மேலாக அந்த வணிகத்தை வந்து உற்பத்தி செய்யக்கூடிய அளவுக்கு இந்த ஒரு விஞ்ஞான தமிழ்நாட்டிலிருந்து தொடங்கி அந்த சயின்டிஸ்ட் உருவாக்கியிருக்காங்கன்னா அது நமக்கு கிடைத்த பெருமையாக நான் தெரிவித்துக் கொள்கிறேன் இது பேரளவில் இல்லை இப்போ பார்க்குறோம் இந்த இந்த சென்னை சிட்டிக்கில் இந்த எம்எஸ்எஸ் ஆர்எஃப் ஃபவுண்டேஷனுடைய அமைப்பு இங்கே இருக்கிறது இந்த இடத்த பார்க்குறப்போ இயற்கையாகவே இருக்குது இடங்கள் அதிகமாக நிறைந்திருக்கு இது எங்கே இருக்குன்னா டெல்டா மாவட்டங்களில் ஆற்றின் கரையோரங்களில் நாமே அந்த ஆதி காலத்தில் மூத்த குடியாக இருக்கின்ற தமிழ் மக்கள் அந்த அவர்களுடைய வாழ்க்கை வாழ்க்கையை தொடங்கிய இடத்தில் நதி நதிக்கரை ஓரங்களில் மூங்கில் க மூங்கில் மரங்களை அதிகமாக அவர்கள் நடவு செய்து அதை உருவாக்கினார்கள் ஆனால் மூங்கிலுக்கென்று மிகப்பெரிய சிறப்பு இருக்கின்றது என்பது இப்பொழுது தான் நமது இரண்டு ஆற்றின் குறுக்கே மூங்கிலில் ஒரு அந்த பாலம் அமைச்சிருந்தாங்க அப்படியே நிறுத்த சொல்லி இறங்கி நடந்து போல அப்போ அந்த பார்க்குறப்போ அப்படி இயற்கையோடு நிறைந்த அந்த பகுதியை பார்க்குறப்போ அந்த இயற்கை சூழ்ந்த பகுதியை நம்ம இங்கே இந்த வளாகத்தில் அமைத்திருக்கின்றனால் அது இயற்கைக்கு நீங்கள் செய்திருக்கின்ற மிகப்பெரிய மிகப்பெரிய அளப்பரிய பணியாற்றி இருக்கிறீர்கள் அதற்காக நான் நன்றியை தெரிவித்துக் கொள்கிறேன் எது அளவு இருபத்தி ரெண்டு புள்ளி ஏழு ஒன்று சதவீதம் இதை இன்னும் பத்தாண்டுகளில் முப்பத்தி மூன்று சதவீதமாக உயர்த்த வேண்டும் என்கின்ற தொலைநோக்கு திட்டத்தை எடுத்து சென்றிருக்கிறார் நான் என் துறையிலே மட்டும் இந்த ஆண்டு பத்தாயிரம் குறுங்காடுகள் உருவாக்குவதாக அறிவிப்பு தந்திருக்கிறேன் விரைவில் அதற்கான பணிகளும் தொடங்கியிருக்கிறேன் என்பதை நான் தெரிவிச்சுக்கிறேன் பத்தாயிரம் குறுங்காடுகளுக்கு நான் ஒன்றும் பெருசாக போய் செய்ய போகிறதில்லை ஒரு லெட்ரு தான் என்னுடைய டிபார்ட்மெண்ட் கீழே ஐம்பத்தி ரெண்டாயிரம் தொழிற்சாலைகள் இருக்கின்றன அதில் ரெட் கேட்டகரியில் வந்து ஒரு பன்னெண்டாயிரத்தி ஐநூறு ஆரஞ்ச் கேட்டகரியில் ஒரு இருபத்தி ஏழாயிரத்தி ஐநூறு அதே மாதிரி க்ரீன் கேட்டகரியில் ஒரு பன்னெண்டாயிரத்தி ஐநூறு ரப் அதே மாதிரி ரப் ஸ்டோன் குவாரி கிரானட் குவாரி எல்லாம் இருக்காங்க துறையினுடைய அமைச்சர் என்கின்ற படியில் எல்லாருக்கும் ஒரு கடிதம் எழுத போகிறேன் நீங்கள் உங்களுக்கு தேவையான வருமானத்திற்காக இயற்கைக்கு நாம் செய்கின்ற அந்த 
இயற்கைக்கு எதிரான செய்கின்ற செயலுக்கு பரிகாரமாக பாவத்தை தீர்க்கின்ற வகையில் ஒரு ஆயிரம் மாதிரி போச்சு அப்படிங்கிற காலகட்டத்தில் அப்படியெல்லாம் நம்ம இருந்தோம் அப்படி அந்த இயற்கை அந்த மரங்கள் ஆக்சிஜன் நமக்கு சுவாசிப்பதற்கு மர ஆக்சிஜன் தருகின்றன அது மட்டுமல்ல இருபத்தி ரெண்டு கிலோ கார்பன் டை ஆக்சைடு உட்கொண்டு மரங்கள் கார்பனை தானே உட்கொண்டு இருபது கிலோ ஆக்சிஜனை தரவுள்ளது மரங்கள் அந்த அடிப்படையில் தான் நான் அந்த மூங்கிலுக்கே மீண்டு வருகிறேன் கண்டிப்பாக இந்த இடத்துல நாம் சராசரியாக மனிதனுடைய நாம் சுவாசிக்கிறதுக்கு இருபத்தி ஒரு சதவீதம் ஆக்சிஜன் தேவை அதுக்கு கீழே போச்சுன்னா அவ்வளோதான் முடிஞ்சு போச்சு ஆக சராசரியாக எங்கே பார்த்தாலும் இப்போ இயற்கையாக இருபத்தி ஒரு சதவீதம் ஆக்சிஜன் இருக்கும் அதே அரசமரம் ஆழமரங்கள் இருக்கின்ற இடத்துல பார்த்தீங்கன்னா சுவாசிப்பில் பார்த்தீங்கன்னா கிட்டத்தட்ட இருபத்தைந்து சதவீதம் ஆக்சிஜன் லெவலில் இருக்கும் மூங்கில் காடுகள் இருக்கின்ற இடத்துல போனீங்கன்னா அதுதான் அதிகபட்சம் இருபத்தி எட்டு சதவீதம் ஆக்சிஜன் இருக்கும் நாம் எளிமையாக சுவாசிக்கலாம் வல்லம் மணியமை காலை கல்லூரியில் ஐயா பேர ஆசிரியர் ஐயா வீரமணி அவர்கள் ஒரு கிலோமீட்டருக்கு இந்த மூங்கில் காடுகளை வளர்த்துருக்காங்க இங்கே இருக்கின்ற மூங்கில் காடுகளை பார்த்தோன்னே அது எனக்கு என்ன ஏரியாமல் எனக்கு மகிழ்ச்சியாக வந்தது வர்றப்போ உள்ளே பார்த்தாலும் இங்கேயும் மூங்கில் மரம் இருக்குது எல்லோரும் வீட்லேயும் ஒரு மூங்கில் மரம் அவசியம் இருக்கணும் அப்படிங்கிறது தான் வலியுறுத்துறது தான் இப்படி போகிறப்போ நீங்கள் டெல்டா மாவட்டங்களில் போகிறப்போ இங்கேயெல்லாம் சுற்றுலா தலங்கள் இங்கெல்லாம் தேடி போகிறோம் டெல்டா மாவட்டங்களில் போய் பாருங்கள் அந்த கரை ஓரங்களில் ஓங்கி உயர்ந்திருக்கின்ற மூங்கில் மரங்கள் நம்ம கண்ணுக்கு குளிர்ச்சி மட்டும் இல்லை நடக்கின்ற பொழுது அதிகமான ஆக்சிஜனை தரக்கூடாது என்பதை தெரிவித்து கொண்டு நான் இந்த துறையினுடைய முதல் அமைச்சர் மாண்புக்கு தமிழக முதலமைச்சர் அவர்கள் இதற்கு முன்பு இப்படி ஒரு துறையே இல்லை மே ஏழாம் தேதி பொறுப்பேற்றதற்கு பின்பு மாண்புக்கு தமிழக முதலமைச்சர் அவர்கள் சுற்றுச்சூழல் மற்றும் காலநிலை மாற்றம் என்கின்ற அந்த துறையை உருவாக்கி என்னுடைய கையிலே ஒப்படைத்தார்கள் அந்த அடிப்படையில் இயற்கையை பாதுகாப்பதற்கு என்னாலான இயங்க வளரக்கூடியது இங்கே இருக்கின்ற நம்ம சொன்ன மாதிரி இந்த மாங்குரோ காடுகள் அதற்கான நடவு செய்வது அதே மாதிரி வேப்ப மரங்கள் மூங்கில் மரங்கள் கடற்பாசிகள் இவற்றையெல்லாம் உருவாக்கணுங்கிறதான் அந்த திட்டம் அதற்கடுத்து தமிழ்நாட்டுடைய எல்லா பகுதிகளுக்கும் இதற்கான திட்டங்களை உருவாக்க இருக்கிறோம் என்பதை தெரிவித்து கொண்டு ஐயா அவர்கள் கிட்டத்தட்ட இதெல்லாம் வந்து இருபத்தஞ்சு ஆண்டுகளுக்கு முன்னாடியே இந்த எதிர்காலத்தில் உலக வெப்பமயம் அதனால் ஏற்படக்கூடிய பாதிப்புகளை சொல்லியிருக்கிறார்கள் அந்த அடிப்படையில் நான் வந்து ஊராட்சி மன்ற தலைவராக இருந்து புதுக்கோட்டை மாவட்டத்தில் இங்கே நமது டாக்டர் ராஜ்குமார் வந்திருக்காரு எங்கள் ஊர் பக்கத்தில் இருக்கார் அவர் எங்களை ஊராட்சி மன்ற தலைவராக இதே மாதிரி எம்எஸ் சுவாமிநாதன் ஃபவுண்டேஷன் சார்பாக நடத்துகின்ற அந்த க பல கருத்தரங்கங்கள் நடக்கும் ஊராட்சி மன்ற தலைவராக க இருந்து நான் அந்த நிகழ்வில் கலந்துருக்கிறேன் அதே ஊராட்சி தேங்க்யூ the minister is uh, just inaugurating the um, exhibitions outside but we will continue we will continue in about 5 minutes yeah those online kindly bear with us we will just continue in about 5 minutes so he has to leave now so we are just uh, this slight change in schedule Thank you. 
request all the uh, dignitaries to please join on the stage uh, is anybody else you, want? you and uh, we'll continue with the program and apologies for this uh, uh, light change in program uh, so the minister had to leave and so we just had to um, alter the program a little bit uh, so we'll have our next uh, Felicitation address. Uh, please take your seats. Uh, those outside, please, uh, um, please come inside and take your seats. We'll just continue with the program, please. Okay. Our next speaker will also join us online, uh, Dr. Bishop Fadroli. He's uh, the representative and country director of the United Nations World Food Program in New Delhi. Dr. Padrali. Uh, good, good afternoon, and thank you very much uh, for this opportunity. Uh, I want to greet uh, and really appreciate uh, uh, great messages from Honorable Minister uh, and also the keynote speaker, uh, Dr. Mahmoud. Um, warm greetings to, of course, uh, Professor Swaminathan, uh, Dr. Madura and Dr. Hariharan. Um, first of all, uh, warmest congratulation and best wishes and happy birthday to uh, Professor Swaminathan. Uh, wishing him long life, happiness, and all the success, uh, continued success uh, in saving lives, eliminating hunger, and all the efforts that's going on. Um, I want to also say that delighted uh, we are in WFP. Uh, uh, for, uh, for, for being invited, and I am so particularly honored to join to wishing uh, and, and, and saying a few notes here. Um, the World Food Program and the Swaminathan Foundation, we've been working for the last 20 years uh, uh, in different fields. Uh, his vision, his uh, thoughts, his ideas, and uh, wisdom have been really helping WFP also to contribute to in different ways or small ways uh, um, uh, to, 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 uh, to in number of areas towards uh, uh, food and nutrition security. One of the work which we did together uh, with Swaminathan Foundation was developing this uh, food and nutrition security atlas uh, in 2000. And, and they were really helped uh, uh, 
uh, to identify vulnerability and, and develop program and policies. And the recent partnership which we have with Swaminathan Foundation on climate change and adaptation, um, uh, hoping will contribute uh, continuously to us. Lots of reference was made on adaptation issues. Uh, sadly, uh, the world uh, in the world, the hunger is rising, uh, and and therefore, um, uh, you know, the the work uh, what Swaminathan Foundation is started. Uh, in India is not only going to benefit in India, but across the world in, in reducing uh, hunger and, and malnutrition. Um, as we speak, uh, over 800 million people go to bed hungry, and there are really um, uh, doubling of the uh, food insecure people from 135 million to 345 million. And almost 50 million people in 45 countries are uh, in the verge of famine. Uh, so therefore, uh, the concern of uh, climate change, the drought, uh, uh, flood, uh, uh, is really fundamental. And uh, uh, the conversation around uh, climate change, uh, sustainability, and, and uh, uh, coastal and hill area are uh, extremely and important. Uh, the heat waves, droughts, floods, sea level rise, glacier melt. Uh, these are threats uh, emerging every day, displacing people, uh, affecting people, killing people. And, and, and therefore, uh, uh, the, the work which Professor Swaminathan has started, uh, a Green Revolution, with, 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 uh, together with Professor uh, Borlang, and, and uh, we really need to work towards a second Green Revolution now, and I want to really uh, congratulate Swaminathan Foundation for initiating uh, several engagement and partnership, and it's so important that we all need to join uh, in these efforts. Uh, India, as we heard uh, from IRI scientists, the transformation India has done in agriculture, um, in improving uh, food security, uh, uh, increase in agricultural production, uh, et cetera. And I'm really hoping um, India shows uh, a leadership going forward uh, uh, in, 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 uh, in contributing to the, uh, the uh, hunger concern and Swaminathan Foundation continues to play an important role. And we are very delighted in WE to join and work together. So thank you very much for this opportunity. Uh, I want to wish well. I want to wish uh, good health for Professor Swaminathan. And I want to congratulate everyone in Swaminathan Foundation for excellent job and great leadership. Namaste, and thank you very much for inviting me. Thank you, Dr. Parsali, for your kind words. Next, we'll have Dr. Sarva Krishnan. She's the director of programs for the Global Crop Diversity Trust in Bonn. Dr. Sarva. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Uh, uh, thank you to the Honorable Minister uh, for his, um, his address and for his commitment to promoting um, environmental health. And also thank you for inviting me to be part of this International Conference on Sustainable Development in Hill and Coastal Ecosystems on the auspices of the birthday of Professor Swaminathan. I'm honored to be part of the celebration and join all of you in wishing him a very happy birthday. And I'm also thrilled uh, to hear about the opening of the Every Child a Scientist Center at Pum Puhar. I can see Mrs. Meena Swaminathan smiling down on all of us and uh, giving her, showering us with her blessings. She has been instrumental and a tireless advocate for this initiative. Uh, for and many up and coming scientists are going to benefit from this program. I commend the in, uh, MSSRF uh, Foundation for uh, convening this important dialogue on hill and mountain ecosystems and coastal areas, both which are, which are rich in biodiversity, but also highly threatened by climate change. Uh, climate change poses a, a significant risk to people who depend on the health of these ecosystems for their livelihood. I was thrilled to hear the optimistic uh, outlook provided by the keynote speaker, Dr. Mohammed, 
as Dr. Madhuskara Swaminathan mentioned, um, mentioned, utilizing science in a participatory manner will be the key in developing successful interventions. I wish the MSSRF and the conference participants and identifying through this dialogue key challenges and ways to overcome these challenges for a sustainable future. So with that, thank you for having me and wish you a great uh, conference and uh, successful outcomes from the conference. Thank you, Dr. Sharada. We have next Professor Rashid Bunyan. Uh, he's the Vice Chancellor of SAU, the Chair E. Bangla Agricultural University in Bangladesh. Dr. Bunyan? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, Honorable Chair, Dr. Madhura Swaminathan, Honorable M.S. Swaminathan. Uh, I'd like to so the respect to him and profound regards for his birthday. Honorable Minister and the distinguished debaters. Well, uh, I would like to MS, uh, MSSRF for organizing such an important international conference that will cover the both hill and coastal ecosystem. Uh, as you know, the 10% of the area of Bangladesh is hilly area. And the coastal areas cover 32% of the country and covers 19 districts and 35 million people representing 29% of the population of the country. So you can understand how important these two issues for Bangladesh. As a densely populated country and the climate change that is affecting the coastal agriculture is really a very important issue we need to take care of it. If we cannot sustain, then it will affect our productivity and ultimately food and nutrition security. While some uh, studies and resources have been carried out and some interventions have been developed, but we need much to do for the coastal agriculture. The conferences will generate some of the uh, good recommendations, as I can understand, and some of the recommendations will be used to develop and to face the challenges. And with this, I would like to thank you once again. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Dr. Bunyan. Uh, our last but not least speaker is Professor V. Geeta Lakshmi. She is the Vice Chancellor of the Tamil Nadu Agriculture University in Coimbatore. Professor Geeta Lakshmi. Um, Professor Geeta Lakshmi, are you online? Hmm? Professor, okay. I think she's not online. She's not online. Hmm? Okay. So um, I think with this, we come to the end of the uh, felicitation addresses. So I invite uh, um, Dr. Ranga Lakshmi, who's the Director of Ecotechnology at MSSRF, to deliver the vote of thanks, please. Good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of uh, chairperson, trustees, staff, and scholars of uh, MSSRF, for uh, joining this uh, inaugural session of uh, International Conference on uh, Sustainable Development, focusing on two major agro-ecosystems, coastal and uh, hill ecosystem, and also on 32nd annual day of our foundation. And on this occasion, I'm also joining with you in uh, greeting our dear professor, for his wonderful birthday and for a long, healthy life. We sincerely thank and appreciate uh, the participation of uh, our mi Honorable Minister, Thiru Shiva V. Mayanathan, Minister for Environment, Climate Change, Youth Welfare and Sports uh, Development, Government of Tamil Nadu, 
for his thoughtful uh, speech and inaugurating the conference. He highlighted the uh, important uh, commitments of the government of Tamil Nadu, especially in increasing the forest cover and also highlighting the impact of climate change, how his department is uh, prepared to address the issues. And while increasing the forest cover, uh, he specifically mentioned uh, two aspects. One is establishing the mini forest. Mini forest, he has a kind of a detailed plan how it should be implemented and what is the future he is looking for. And also, he reiterated the plantation of bamboo. Almost all our uh, coastal region, we have that uh, plantation and increasingly it is coming up in urban landscapes. So how the promotion of bamboo will help uh, for increasing the ecosystem services. So we thank him for uh, inaugurating this conference and also releasing our annual reports anticipating uh, in this uh, day. Also, I thank uh, Professor Mohammed Shaheed Rashid Bukhian, Vice Chancellor, Sherry Bangla Agricultural University for your uh, wishes and how the coastal agricultural development is important in meeting the climate change issues. And also I thank uh, our uh, beloved trustees, uh, Dr. Narayan Hegde and uh, um, Jiju uh, P. Alex for uh, kindly accepting the first copy of our two publications. Uh, we are very honored, sir. And I appreciate uh, and express all our uh, gratitude and thanks to our partner organizations, alumni and friends of MSSRF for gracing this occasion with your uh, kind presence and joining this uh, event and also the members who joined online. Finally, I thank uh, the print media for covering the whole event and most importantly, our primary partners, both men and women, farmers from different field sites for displaying their uh, work and innovative uh, experiences and achievements, which is making these events more lively. With this, I close this uh, uh, vote of thanks as well as the inaugural session and we thank everyone for your presence. And for the next two days, we look forward for a very productive discussion on these uh, two important themes coastal as well as uh, hill ecosystem conservation. Thank you one and all. Thank you, Dr. Randa. Uh, let's all rise for the national anthem now. Thank you, everybody. Just some uh, housekeeping announcements. Um, lunch is ready, and uh, you can go to the uh, pantry as well as there are for the staff. There's lunch arranged also near the GRD building. Uh, you're also welcome to visit the pavilions, the technology community, and also the uh, research pavilions down here. And uh, we have a lot of uh, technology on display, and also a lot of outcome stories that you can take a look at and success stories uh, we've had over the last uh, 32 years. Um, and we reconvene at the same hall around 1.30 p.m., please. Kindly be seated by 1.30 p.m., okay? 
Thank you so much uh, for attending this inaugural session. And those online, thank you so much as well. Please be uh, connected at 1.30 after the lunch break. Uh, we have about 300 people who have registered with us online. So thank you so much for participating. <laughs>